Ah, hello World Wide Web, I'm Becker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. And it has been a while since our last 420 special now, hasn't it? Last time I did one was way back in 2019, reviewing the 2015 release, Evil Bong 420. Now at the time, they already had two more Evil Bong movies in the franchise, and since then, they've released two more, with Evil Bong 888 released this year. But I still have to cover Evil Bong High 5, the sixth movie in the franchise, thanks to Ginger Dead Man vs. Evil Bong. And it follows a similar formula to every Evil Bong since the third. Is there a story? I mean, technically, but it's unabashedly just a means to set up the important characters we've been following for a while to have conversations with a handful of wacky full moon regulars, and maybe progress the plot thing eventually? Let's be honest, if you're still watching here at Evil Bong High Five, it's clear that you really don't care about the plot. But nevertheless, let's take a look at Evil Bong High Five. And spoil it anyway. We open up back in Bong World. Larnell, played by John Patrick Jordan, is trapped there, along with Robin Sidney, who plays the Ginger Dead Man character Sarah Lee, not Luann from Evil Bong. It's a different character. And Amy Pafrath, who plays Velicity. So juicy, tell me more. And as they've been trapped in Bong World since the end of the last movie, they're just fucking bored. There's nothing to do here at all except smoke weed and bone all day. Why are we to be trapped in this endless cycle? Of course they haven't spent the whole time doing that. No, they've been trying to escape for a really, really long time. But sadly, that evil Bong is just too smart for them. E.B. found out how we escaped before, and she sealed up all the rabbit holes. And the wormholes, the foxholes, and the assholes. I'm still really sore about that last one. So, nothing to do but knit with that amazing supply of hemp they have. Maybe we should talk to Rabbit. He's always helped us before. I guess that is one word for it. He has been the keystone of the entire series, making sure that the world is constantly at threat from Bong Takeover. Lyle doesn't think Rabbit would be of much use, as the old man is insane and actually likes endless supplies of weed and titties. Felicity knows he has a trick, though. A way of thinking that allows you to wield whatever plot-related power is convenient at the time. But you had to totally clear your thoughts to get your mind in that state of zen. And it's not as easy to get your brain pan as empty as rabbits. Have you tried Twitter? The name of that technique, Nothing Head. Which sounds more like a euphemism for decapitation, but nevertheless, the three of them managed to wrestle Rabbit away from playing Twister with a pair of titties long enough to get Rabbit, played by Sonny Carl Davis, to first of all tell them to never speak the name of the bong. She who must not be named... You mean <laughs> If you say her name, she'll show up. And yet a mere two minutes prior... E.B. found out how we escaped before, and she sealed up all the rabbit holes. It's good to know we're yet again dealing with a movie where the rules only matter shortly after they are established. Don't you want to get out there and do what you do? Yeah, whatever you guys want to do, it's cool. And the ginger dead man is still kicking around, he's just kind of... there. It's kind of like Dragon Ball, where former rivals become minor characters who never really do anything, but they are always just there. Except for launch. And he's still voiced by Robert Ramos. At their wit's end, Sarah and Velocity use Rabbit's weakness and schmooze up to him to convince him to, uh, reject Boobage. Well, the point is it gets him to actually start moving the plot along, giving those present a crash course in the ways of Nothing Head. Pay close attention. Shall I be writing this down? <laughs> You've already failed. If you want to master nothing, then do nothing! Write nothing! I'm surprised that this movie even has a script at that point. Did they just ask these characters to come on set and go in front of a green screen and spitball lines until it's funny? As the lesson of doing nothing to become nothing continues, the group achieves nothing. Rabbit is the only one among them who seems capable of achieving the fabled nothing head. Seems right now nothing head provides insight into the plot. Unfortunately though, Rabbit still can't use it to figure out a way to escape Bong World and her evil grasp. Who? Evie, uh... Gosh, dang it. I knew I could get you to say it. You owe me a buck. But he says the name, which will surely summon E.B., the evil bomb. After saying it twice, think of it like a half-assed candy man. And it appears she does. E.B., the evil bomb, still voiced by Michelle Mays. She isn't pleased to be summoned right when she was busy trying to plan how to take over the entire world. That, and she sees right through Larnell's clumsy wit. You think you can trick me into revealing my weaknesses? Let me tell you something, White Bread. There are none. They're gone like rabbit's pride. Uh, ooh. Well, to be fair, the weaknesses did at least exist at some point. 
But while they're all gathered here, may as well spout exposition about her world domination plans and what's making them so difficult. I've tried to take over the outside world by conquering one tiny domain at a time. Here we go. I mean, it's fun for a little while, but man, when all you ever do is the Ubisoft open world formula, it gets old fast. So she's going for broke. Total planetary takeover. But, 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 like a certain episode of Pinky and the Brain, her world domination machine comes with a rather hefty price tag. How much seed money are we talking about? One million dollars! Jeez, you'd think after five movies I'd have come up with at least that much by now. So the plan is that they go out and work for it. You can't just conjure up one million dollars, but you can magic together a head shop for the main characters to sell EB's magic weed from. You got 30 days to give me my money, and you bitches better have my money! What the what the? 30 days? Dude, that's impossible. Don't worry, Larnell. The movie's not exactly great at showcasing the passage of time. When you actually get to the end of those 30 days, it'll actually feel more kind of like uh, less than a week. So they have to do what every stoner hates. Get a job! But on the bright side, that means the five of them will finally be able to see Earth again. That reminds me. The bitches stay here with me. Say what? Or three of them, anyway. You'd think she'd want all of them there working, if this is so time-sensitive. But she's like, nah, need them for collateral. Besides, if the girls are there with them, then the guys might think they could just, like, go for a walk or something. But they're not just gonna sit around all movie. No, they're gonna be tortured. Prepare yourself for... The Punishers! Uh, a couple of full moons handed in the, uh, adults movie stars that they just happen to have kicking around. Which means, unfortunately, I really can't show you what's going on here. It's a shame, probably the most entertaining part of the movie so far. Oh well, Rabbit asks Sarah for some new threads, and she just so happens to have already knitted him up a swanky suit, and even made a... gi... for the ginger dead man. Well, I guess it'll make the DVD box look more interesting. With that, they teleport away, right to Evie's magical weed dispensary. I look good. How'd you change your clothes? Anything is possible once you master the world of... Nothing had. <laughs> well, yeah, but you weren't using it at the time. Why am I pointing out plot holes in Evil Bong 5? Strange thing, though. It seems if Eby's plan was to make a million dollars in this one store, maybe sending a couple of stoners to run the place really wasn't the smartest of moves. As a first order of business for the two of them, get high as fuck before looking into the back to see what they got. First of all, jars and jars full of magic weed. And that right there? That's probably for the Queen Bitch's eventual arrival. Look, they only had enough time to build this set once, so the pedal still for Act 3 is just gonna be there, alright? And there's all the Evil Bong merch on the shelf. Rabbit prophesizes that they are for selling after filling with weed. In the meantime, the ginger dead man is using his handy dandy Samsung flip phone to call up Phoebe, played by Mindy Robinson. She's coming later. First, we gotta establish that the weed blower still exists. That takes them from high to super high. I'm higher than Jesus right now. Achievement unlocked. Just saying, you're probably gonna have a bit of a hard time selling a million dollars worth of weed if you can't run the register because you're suffering from couch lock. And you've smoked half your stock. Fortunately for them, though, before any customers, they instead are approached by Phoebe. She's here for that job the ginger dead man offered her. The bowling alley has since closed, and she's now homeless, sleeping at the bowling alley, wearing the uniform that is the only clothes she has. Therefore, she doesn't even care that all Rabbit can do is pay her an exposure. Though it will be quite a bit of exposure. In accordance with prophecy. Duh, boss. Oh, gee, they paid good money for it. I'll show them off. And the booby count rises. Without freeing the nipple, much to Rabbit's chagrin. Oh, I remember you're a serious actress and don't want to get naked. Hey, it makes my job easier. I don't have to edit around all the scenes she's in. First order of business in your new job slash home? Get the hell out of here and try and attract some customers. Customers they desperately, desperately need. But who should happen to walk into the store but Grandpa, still played by Jacob Witkin, who sadly passed away the year this movie released. He didn't have the biggest role in this movie, but he does give an entertaining performance. Look at you! Still wallowing in your squalor and delving in dubious acts like a pulsating boil on a viper's vagina. Doing what he does best, assaulting Larnell with a ceaseless string of intellectually alliterated aspersions. 
Graham says he was brought here because he sensed someone who could only be the biggest disappointment in the world, and of course found Larnell. But whoever he found, he was going to showcase like a caged monkey, an example of the lowest of human filth for his progeny, Jeff, Larnell's half-brother, played by Jonathan Katz. After explaining in no uncertain terms that Jeff is the world's next super genius tech billionaire, and Larnell is... Well, Larnell. They leave, achieving nothing for the plot but putting a smile on my face. Following this, some actual customers show up, credited as Redneck, Redneck, and Crag Whore. They want to buy all they can with all they have. It's like a few nickels, so, uh, no, you can't afford this magic weed. Hard working woman does an honest nickel a trick. Tell you what, and it don't get you no further. You fuckers! Yeah. Ooh, they are absolutely gonna destroy your Yelp rating. And yes, is the format of the movie. Again. The characters have their set, and every now and again, another set of characters come in to do a scene. Such as Hambo over here, played by Chance A. Reardon, and his assistant, Piggy Sue, played by Candy, played by Rory Moon. Anyway, he was in the last movie, they know what he's selling, and they aren't buying. I'm not selling anything but opportunity here. Then what's with all the merch? Okay, so in the Full Moon Cinematic Universe, collectible toys exist of these characters within their own reality? Even better, the movie just fucking stops at this point as a means to plug BadassDolls.com, the only place to get these badass dolls. Only 200 will be made. But it's still up online, so I'm gonna guess that that was just a bit of FOMO marketing there. That's just what I love in my hour-long movies without much of a plot to speak of. Shameless advertising thrown right in the middle of it. And who is this? I'm Decker Shadow, the internet personality with the best hair. I reviewed all the Evil Bong movies up to this one. Holy sagging nutsack. Now you remember. So how did this happen? Oh no, I'm just here to do the standard YouTuber call to action thing. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click like, subscribe if you already haven't, and check the video description for links to purchase this movie or help support the channel on Patreon. You need money? Really, Larnell? I'm not begging, I'm, I'm working. I'm not the one trying to make a million dollars selling weed. I do do a little acting on the side. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, I gotta get back to the review. You, you continue just uh, filming ads and calling it a movie. I gotta hit the bong. Stat. They got you, bro. As part of their deal with Hambo, they will stock the Badass Dolls available at BadassDolls.com, and Hambo will help them shoot a commercial for Evie's Magic Weed Dispensary. Don't be drab and dreary. Visit Evie's Magical Weed Dispensary and get cherry. It's the happiest shit. And while the satirical ad is fun and all, it does lose a bit of its charm once we've been subjected to a real one. I'll let you decide which one I'm talking about. You know, I got this connection down at Killjoy Psycho Circus. I'm gonna make a phone call and get this on the air. Oh, thanks a lot, Larnell. Now I'm gonna have to review that entire series, too. By the way, you can buy Hambo right now at BadassDolls.com. 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 Moving on, a film crew shows up and Rabbit sees an opportunity. You see, this group made a wrong turn on their way to the rap party. Well, we shot a movie this morning. It's called Eleanor Roosevelt versus the Loch Ness Monster. We edited it in the afternoon and distributed it in the late afternoon. It's now available at grocery stores nationwide. You know, uh, there's a saying about those in glass houses. Rabbit points out that there is plenty here for a good rap party, but even better, this movie set just so happens to be the perfect location to film a movie in. So that's the first roll of cash they managed to make. Not selling weed. Uh, not to worry, they've been selling weed off screen. Guess commercials worked. Kinda, they haven't sold near enough yet, but Rabbit has faith. People are coming from high and low to buy this stuff. <sighs> You have to admit, it's the best weed ever. Whoa! What the hell happened to audio track? Larnell doesn't notice Robo Rabbit. He's more concerned with the fact that this magic weed is evil weed. And it does kind of steal people's souls. Kind of skipped over that part with all the titties and plugs for badassdolls.com. Go buy a badass doll today. Rabbit says not to worry because, uh, you know, they'll eventually win. And that means everyone will be freed, so no harm done, right? So it's back to not thinking about ways to defeat Evie at all, and instead just continuing to sell weed to fund her world domination machine. Though I guess we shouldn't care too much about what happens to the souls of such amazing characters as this. Hey, check it out. He's like a leprechaun or some shit. <laughs> Where's your funny colored eggs, hey, leprechaun? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's leprechaun and critters. You know, this movie could stop adding more series of films I have to review anytime now.
The Heshers, played by Kyla Hurst and Orison Chaplin, just kind of continue like this for way too long. We don't care about fantasy and shit. We just want to get baked for reals. For really reals. Ugh. These characters suck, the writing sucks, the pacing sucks, the payoff. Well, we haven't gotten to that part yet. Point is, they stole a ton of money, then came here. Actually, still high from the magic weed they smoked last movie. So here you go, 5,000 should cover a handful of EBs. In the meantime, back in Bong World, Felicity and Sarah have turned the tables on the Punishers, whipping them, demanding to know where the rabbit hole is. Whoa, what the fuck is going on here? I'm sorry, EB, I, I know it's disorienting, but I really, really have to be careful about how I edit around a scene like this. This gives E.B. the idea to turn these two into potential Sinno bitches. Later, first we still have that whole weed selling plot to do. Got the PTS Destroyer over here, money to spend but a little short on temper. No worries, the weed blower can take care of that. That scene out of the way, we gotta add a little emotion to this movie so you know it's serious. Another chick will come along. <laughs> I want my candy! It seems the ginger dead man's sweetheart has been broken over seeing candy with that PIG OF A MAN, HAMBO! And he can tell that his emotions are really on edge based on a dream sequence that I can't show because WOW! Larnell's like, don't feel bad, Gingy. She is kind of a slut. That sort of makes him feel better. Anyway, it's time for the big tally. Dude, we're short like 40k. I'm sorry, Taco Bell brought nacho fries back and I just couldn't resist! Trying to figure out what to do about that, Rabbit engages nothing head. But this is the part of the movie where it suddenly stops working, so they're fucked. Evie shows up moments later. While this is going on, the girls are at their wits end searching for the rabbit hole. All they do is get out of you! <laughs> hey, look at that, it was just right there, like five feet away from them the whole time. They could have found it just literally feeling around in the dark. So they hop on through, in the back room. Don't worry, Evie teleported to the front room moments before. Being short, they are at her mercy. So now it's time for negotiation. Maybe it's not enough for total world domination, but you don't want the Middle East anyways. I don't know, that is the tile on the risk board that it looks like everyone is trying to take. But, 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 there's also the fact that technically speaking, Evie gave them 30 days to earn that million dollars, and according to the movie, it's only been 29 days, 23 hours, and 59 minutes. They still have time! Wouldn't you know it, the Rednecks and Cracker were just so happy to show up, and they just so happen to spend all month earning money, a nickel at a time, which just so happens to total to... 39,999 and 95 cents, I tell you. But for $960,000 wasn't good enough, I'm still sure Evie's gonna have a problem with this too. Not to worry, upon hearing that, they receive an extra nickel. Well, that's it, Evie. You got your million and can take over the world now. But she's still being a bitch about it and refuses to let the girls free. So they just walk in like, hi, is this the climax? No time to explain, dudes. Just help Rabbit get into nothing head. Okay, roger that. I'm back! Ah! So they have to get nothing hit, even though they just succeeded, and Ginger Dead Man's emotional trauma has now reverted him back to villain mode. Oh, I see. We're, we're setting up the next movie. One forehead slap later, and Rabbit's mind is emptied. Very emptied. Nothing Head has reached a new level. All of the plot powers have been unlocked to prep the sequel. In other words, hold on to your butts. Rabbit's Nothing Head creates a singularity, sucking in Edie, Larnell, and the Ginger Dead Man. This leads them to a strangely animated dimension. Larnell, trapped in a uh, whatever, with Edie joining forces with the Ginger Dead Man for revenge. What the hell? Hell is right, motherfucker! Weed is live! Which will be covered on our next installment, Evil Bong 666. I assume I haven't actually checked yet to make sure that they actually follow through with this, but it's not like it even really matters. Uh, anyway, that was Evil Bong High Five. What was I expecting? It's Evil Bong High Five. After how many of these were bad? Of course this one was terrible. Do I really have to go into detail here? Even if I do, how many details could I possibly go into for a movie like this? Evil Bong High Five is yet another installment in a horror franchise that hasn't had a lick of anything to do with horror for quite a while. Just weed, jokes, and tits. Now, well, that's a bit harsher than it has to be. The series does follow established characters with their roles reprised by returning actors and actresses. These roles 
really have next to nothing to do with what's going on at any given time, that's clearly because of the way these movies are structured. Evil Bong 1, 2, and possibly 3 actually have what you would call plot progression, and that has been completely absent from the series since. High Five, much like 420, has a much simpler structure. Set of location, film disconnected series of jokes to fill the running time, climax a set of sequel. To that end, how much you would enjoy this movie comes down effectively entirely to how much you like the humor and having titties thrown in your face at regular intervals. Unfortunately, the humor is very hit and miss, with few entertaining points in my opinion, and a whole ass ton of jokes that may as well have been slow landscape shots for how much they grabbed me. Which brings us down to the tits, which are nice and all, but hey, if that's all I'm watching this movie for, let's be honest, there are plenty of options in this world for that without having to fire up an Evil Bong movie. At the end of the day, Evil Bong High Five is an ad. It hardly has any identity or plot of its own, and it seems the main thing it set out to do was to advertise Evil Bong 666 and, of course, BadassDolls.com. Get your Badass Doll today at BadassDolls.com. Coming in at one Badass Doll out of five. Which might sound harsh when you consider the acting wasn't horrendous, the cinematography looked fine, everything looked okay, but there's just so much nothing going on here that it is actually a plot point. Thank you all for watching. I've been Dr. Shadow. And remember, singularity endings suck. You tenebrous corn turd.